Welcome to beautiful Santa Cruz, California. You're looking out at the Monterey Bay, which is home to the nation's largest kelp forests and hundreds of different plant and animal species. Today you'll be joining us on a tour with our guide. So my name is Ian O'Halloran. I'm a commercial kelp harvester out of Santa Cruz, California. Who will help us explore the natural abundance of California's coast. Okay, right on guys. So um, it's a bit high tide today, but um, we're gonna go out through these stairs right here, paddle out to the kelp forest. So just careful as you're um, walking down, it feels slippery and watch out for sneaker waves all the time. Um, the ocean's unpredictable, so we just wanna be real cautious and um, um, aware of our surroundings every time we're in the water. Um, so we're gonna check out the giant kelp forests. Um, hopefully find some cool intertidal um, species as well kind of the understory and uh, um, the kelp forest on top. And we'll see what we find out and explore. So let's go. The main species that dominate the kelp forests are giant kelp, the Macrocystis pyrifera, and then the bull kelp, Neriocystis leukiana. Giant kelp is a perennial, so it can live up to eight years, grow 150 feet a day. You get these specific wind patterns that are offshore. And then it churns up the water. It kind of like is this recycling effect. So it's called upwelling. And you get that cold, nutrient-rich water like drives up from to the warmer surface and then recycles it all back down. The kelp grows in that cold, nutrient-rich water. But there's been a big issue with it in Southern California and in Northern California with giant kelp and bull kelp. But at least in the Monterey Bay, I've spoken with a lot of scientists and they're, they're pretty optimistic that like this area is really holding strong. making sure like runoff and pollution, like sediment, all those things that we get that exist on land and that run into the ocean and can like cover all like the new sporophytes growing and they can't get enough sunlight. So that can be a big issue. Not so much like the pressure of harvesting, but like the imbalances within the environment. That's like the biggest thing that face it water temperature rising and even like one to two degrees they can handle but too warm of water can influence the kelp greatly and they can start dying back but they're pretty resilient but they sequester carbon from the atmosphere which is huge and then that in turn combats ocean acidification sanctuary for the ocean of course you know like all the species that live in them so essentially like if you mow down the forest on land all the animals are like what where do i go like you know i have no home now so it's like the same thing in the ocean but we don't see that you know as we do on land
the reproductive site is at the base of the plant, so like harvesting never endangers its ability to reproduce, which is great. Without them, you know, these native, these native ecosystems would definitely like be suffering, you know, a lot more. Yeah, so this is just like the inner tidal, um, and obviously it's like I think we're at like a probably like a three foot tide right now, so it'll get even lower than it is when you're minus tide, but. Yeah, the inner tidal is just like a the zone that's, you know, exposed at the low tide, covered it high, um, and, and, it, and it happens uh, four times a day. So you get a low, high, low, high throughout the day. And then so you can all the exposed and the high tide will all be underwater. Um, and then it's like a really competitive area because there's a lot of nutrients, a lot of like smaller species of like invertebrates, um, and obviously seaweed, crabs. So it's like everything's competing for space. So you can see there's not like much rock that's like exposed. Mm -hmm. There's like areas that something's gonna move in there, whether it's like seaweed or like, like worms and like other like um, uh, sometimes we get urchins in here, a lot of mussels and uh, there's definitely some fairy shrimps in there. <laughs> you saw what? Some fairy shrimp in some of these. Oh really? Areas. Nice. So yeah, you know, tide pooling basically. But uh, so you gotta time this this harvest around the tides because this will all be underwater. I think it's just it's, I don't know if it's like texture. It's a lot of people like the texture. I think it's yeah. more just like seaweed. I get a lot of like they just hated seaweed touching them when they've been in the water, and they're just like, "Ooh, seaweed's gross," and it's not. You yeah. know, it's just like, and we don't eat it except now. Like the nori sheets are so popular that yeah. it's one of those things. I think, oh, like my kids love seaweed. So that's helped a lot uh -huh. introducing, and then kids will try that, yeah. um, and people in general are just really curious. It's a new food source. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. but I think it's just that it's, you know, it's like how do you prepare it? What do you do with it? Yeah. That's kind of like they don't really know. So sharing recipes. Yeah. And then, like, allowing them to try it yeah. is uh, is the best the best way. Yeah. And having them try it just raw, yeah. you know, like in a pure form, you can like, it's not flavored, it's not um, yeah seasoned with anything, um, and I think that's like that's helped a lot. <laughs> this last one I really like is called Ooh. Splendid Iridescent. That looks so good. So yeah, this one's really good and um, kind of got these big sheets. Mm -hmm. You can use them as like wraps yeah. almost, mm -hmm. you know, but here I'll cut up a piece for you, you. you guys to show. And this one actually is one of my, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. It's a little, it kind of has a metallic flavor taste to it, but really good soups. And if you like wakame. Yeah, kind of like a, yeah. A wakame. And then, uh, yeah, you can kind of use oh, it as yeah. noodles. So like, mm -hmm. I like this. You know, wow. do it like this, yeah. and then, like slice it up into little pieces, and then you can you can blanch it or just stir fry it mm -hmm. or whatever, and it's like these little these little mini noodles. Cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. They're good, yeah. That's definitely my favorite. Thank you all for coming out and learning about these amazing native California species. Um, yeah, they should be cherished and you know reintroduced into society as a as a new local food source that we can um, not only consume. But uh, use in many different industries, and um, and thanks so much for for coming along on the journey.
Thank you. Thanks Thank again. you. Yeah. Thank you.